Hi there. So in this video, we'll talk about the comparison tests, which are another set of tests that actually help us tell whether a sequence is convergent or divergent when we know something about the convergence behavior of another series. And that's the whole idea behind comparison tests. And you know, you, you can pretty much guess that from the name as well, comparison. Right? You have a series, let's say A sub n, which you're trying to well figure out whether it converges or diverges. If somehow we have another series B sub n for which well, for which we know that it's convergent or divergent, and we also know there is some relationship between A n and B n, then maybe we can also use that to say that A n is convergent or divergent. Right, so that's the main idea. And I'll give you an example here. We know that the series one over n cubed is convergent. Right, so this is the series, the reciprocals of all cubes. So one over one plus one over eight plus one over 27 and so on. And it's a P series with P equals three. Right, the power is three in the denominator. And so we already know it's convergent. Um, from the from the integral test and so can we use this to say something about the series 1 over n cubed plus 3 n plus 1 okay let's write out the first few terms here so for this second sequence n cubed plus 3 n plus 1 so let's start plugging in n equals 1 that's a 5 n equals 2 that's 15 n equals 3 it's 37 n equals 4 that's 77 and so on and well there is a relationship between these two series in fact even without me plugging in numbers you already see that there is also an n cubed term in the denominator here um, but here, plugging them in, you see that, well, the denominators in my second series are all larger than the corresponding denominators, right? For n equals 1, n equals 2, and so on. Which, in fact, means that this sequence down here has, term by term, uh, something smaller. Now we can now prove this in general, right? We guess this from our numbers here. But really, since n is larger than or equal to 1, we can immediately say n cubed plus 3n plus 1 is going to be larger than n cubed, which in turn implies, well, if you take the reciprocal, or remember the inequality sign changes. Right? Because the larger a denominator is for a fraction, the smaller the entire fraction will be. Assuming that your numerator is fixed, right? because you're dividing by a larger thing. How does this help us? Well, we know that 1 over n cubed is convergent. Right? Um, and this sequence is smaller. And so if we keep adding all these terms up here for 1 over n cubed, and as n goes to infinity, we're getting a finite number, right? That's the limit of that partial sum. Then this series, 1 over n cubed plus 3n plus 1, must also converge, if that's the case. Because term by term, it's smaller. And so its partial sums are going to be smaller than the corresponding partial sum for 1 over n cubed. And let's formalize this in the statement of what we will call the comparison tests for series. If a n and b n are series with positive terms, and if we know that b n is convergent, and a n is smaller than b n, then a n is also convergent. Right? So I just read the first bullet point there. 
But that's what we did in the previous example here. Right? Both of these series are positive series. Right? When I plug in n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals any natural number, I'm going to get something positive for my term. And so in the picture here, what's that going to what that's going to look like is the following. So I know I have a BN series that's convergent. Right, so that's my BN. And I know that AN term by term is smaller than BN. Therefore, AN is convergent. Now, on the other hand, we can also use this to conclude divergence of a series. If we know that we have a series B sub n that diverges, right, which means again, it's partial sums blow up to infinity. Um, and if you have a series A sub n that's even larger than B sub n, then A sub n also has to diverge. Right? There's no way that adding something larger gives you something finite, while something smaller blows up to infinity. Right? So really, it's a simple comparison. And that's why it's called the comparison test. Um, you're just looking at which one is larger and which one is smaller, and using that to prove convergence or divergence. Um, you probably saw something similar when you were integrating improper integrals. Right? There's a similar theorem in there. Um, when you where you can compare functions and talk about convergence or divergence of improper integrals. Okay, so let's do some examples here. Um, n minus one over n times four to the n. Okay, well the first thing you notice here is that you're not given what series to con co to compare this to. Right? Not like the first example here where I say, hey, here's 1 over n cubed, <laughs> it's convergent. What can we say about this other series that looks suspiciously like 1 over n cubed? <laughs> we don't say that here. You're just given a series n minus 1 over n times 4 to the n. And you're asked, is it convergent or divergent? And so part of the technique here in using a comparison test is also finding an appropriate series to compare it with. And that also depends on whether you're guessing that the series converges, in which case you need to find a larger sequence that converges, or diverges, in which case you'll need to find a smaller sequence that diverges, right? Because the inequalities here depend on whatever it is you're proving. If you're proving convergence for an, you need bn to be larger. If you're proving divergence for an, you need bn to be smaller. So what's our guess here? Well, for the series in one, it looks similar to a geometric series. Right? Remember, our geometric series are of the form ar to the n minus 1 n equals 1 to infinity. So this looks very similar. It has 4 to the n in the denominator. In fact, I can write it this way. n equals 1 to infinity, n minus 1 over n times 1 over 4 to the n. And so we know that convergence or divergence of a geometric series simply depends on its common ratio r. It's convergent, absolute value of r is strictly less than 1. And so if we let a n, right, a sub n, be equal to n minus 1 over n, 1 over 4 to the n. What if we let b n be equal to just 1 over 4 to the n? Right, so that's exactly a geometric series. And we know this converges. So can we use it to prove that a sub n converges? In other words, is a sub n smaller than b sub n? Well, in fact it is, because if you look at this factor that we're multiplying 
to 1 over 4 to the n, n minus 1 over n is always going to be smaller than 1. All right, smaller than or equal to 1. So multiplying both sides of the inequality by 1 over 4 to the n, you get this, and then this inequality as a result. Which means b sub n is larger than or equal to our first series a sub n for all natural numbers n. Therefore, well, can we use the comparison test now? Well, you have to say one more thing. You have to say that they're series with positive terms. Well, they are positive, um, except for the very first term of a sub n. When you plug in n equals 1, this is actually equal to 0. But that doesn't really matter, right? Remember, for a series, we only care about what happens in the long term. Right, so it's positive for all n larger than or equal to 2, and that's fine for me. So since a and b n are positive, n is larger than or equal to 2, um, then we can conclude that a n is convergent, because b n is convergent. And what this demonstrates is that geometric series are good candidates to use for comparison tests. And, well, P-series as well. Which converge for P larger than or equal to 1. Now, there are other examples here. Uh, you, can, you can try number 2 yourself. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video. Right. I'll give you a hint. Maybe try to use a P-series there. Um, how about number 3 here? For number 3, it looks like it's similar to 1 over 2 to the n as well. Right. So if I say let a sub n be equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, So number two, do it yourself. Okay, what if I let bn be 1 over 2 to the n? We know this converges. Again, it's a geometric series with common ratio 1 half. But a n and bn don't actually satisfy the inequality you need. Right? Because since 2n minus 1 is smaller than 2 to the n, then when you take the reciprocals, you get 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 is larger than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n. Or that a sub n is larger than or equal to b sub n. That does not help us here. All we've said is that here's a sub n the series you started with, it's larger than some convergent series. That's not enough to say an is convergent, right? We can't use that at all to prove an is convergent. I mean, it's still a good guess, right? To say that, hey, an probably converges. It's essentially the same as the geometric series 1 over 2 to the n just that the denominators are off by 1. It's a good guess. Um, so maybe there's another way to prove that statement. And in fact, there is. For these cases where you can find a similar series for which you conjecture that its growth rate is the same as your a sub n series, you can actually just take a limit. You take the limit of the quotient of a n and b n. Okay, what do I mean by that? So remember, in the previous slide, we had a n. 
1 over 2 to the n minus 1, our original series. And we were guessing that it has the same long-term behavior as 1 over 2 to the n. Okay. We couldn't find an inequality there that helps us prove a n is convergent. But what does this comparison test say? Well, what happens if we take the limit? As n goes to infinity of the ratio of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 divided by 1 over 2 to the n. Okay. Let's simplify this a bit. Okay. So put the 2 to the n on top. Well, this is not infinity over infinity, right? But there's a simple way of dealing with this. Just divide the top and the bottom by the largest term you see. Kind of like what you do for rational functions. Here you divide by 2 to the n. And you get this. And what's that equal to? That's equal to exactly 1, right? It's 1 divided by 1 minus 0. And what the limit comparison test says is that if you do this operation, if you take the limit of a n over b n, and you get something finite here, so it's not infinity, but you also get something positive, right? It's not zero, some, some real number between zero and infinity, then one of two conclusions hold. Either they both converge a n and b n, or they both diverge. In other words, the fact that the limit of their quotient is a finite number really tells us that they grow at the same pace as n goes to infinity. And so they must have the same convergence behavior as well. Therefore, since bn is convergent, well, so does a sub n. And we'll call this by the limit comparison test. Right? And so this is now another tool that you can use to prove convergence or divergence of series.